Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School, where this morning we will be jumping into the second week of our new quarterly, where we are studying God's covenants with us. Um, so very excited to uh, talk about this bilateral covenant, what that really means and what it looks like. But before we get started, uh, we will have a testimony from, and we have new faces. I should also say that. So we have new faces in our Sabbath School this week, and we're very excited about that. And an older one, um, if you've been watching this for a while, we'll welcome back brother marlin um mm -hmm. so we actually asked brother marlin to uh give us a testimony this morning I got, i've got one yeah that sounds great um uh my testimony for this week is that my daughter started walking so <gasps> it's a lot of fun Praise good God. times in the city huh <laughs> that's and of a, course she started walking towards daddy first so you know <laughs> <laughs> That's a testimony and a prayer request all in one. Yeah. <laughs> Follow that <in> close. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. It's great to see her growing. She was just born and now she's walking. I can't believe it. Um, Ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. Does anyone else have prayer requests since we are now praying for Marlon and as his daughter um, starts to get into everything. Uh, now that can, <laughs> she'll be running that. before he knows it. And then he'll look and go, you were over there. Why are you over here? <laughs> I just pray for my job as a lot of things are changing. Um, just a lot of changes are happening and just trying to keep my head afloat, I guess you could say. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I guess my prayer request would be um, similar, um, just as uh, so many different changes and transitions um, to continue to walk in the Lord's peace, um, resist the temptation for irritation and frustration, and um, just to allow God's abiding presence to um, be the still small voice that I hear leading and guiding me. I like that. Resist the temptation of, for irritation and frustration. Um, praise report. One of the sisters in our church, her dad has been going through a lot of health problems and there was a breakthrough today where he gets to stay in his facility for a little bit longer. Um, they were trying to tell him that he had to leave and it came through that he can stay a little longer. So that's a praise report mm. that we received this evening. Amen. Um, and then just continue to pray for our churches, mm -hmm. uh, for our youth, because they are, there's a lot that they come up against every day, decisions mm -hmm. they have to make uh, that we may not even understand because it's a different world than what we grew up in. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Any other prayer requests or praise reports? If not, we will ask Sister Naomi to pray for our prayer requests and to open our Sabbath school. Yes. Please bow your heads. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much that we could all come together to study your word and inspired word. I bring up the prayer requests that were mentioned here, um, each and every one of ours. I pray that you please bless in your will, according to your will. And I pray that you be with us in this Sabbath school study, that you please give us each wisdom and guidance and teach us something new about you and i pray that your will be done in jesus name amen. amen amen thank you for that opening prayer and we will jump right in as i mentioned today's lesson is god's covenants with us and i like to say a little bit about that sabbath afternoon lesson before we get started um and it talks about how god has made contracts or covenants with us and a lot of times you know it's a bilateral contract is if this then that uh, we have a lot of that in our society today. You know, if you give me money, I give you food. Uh, that mm -hmm. in itself is a contract. Um, but God's covenants are a little bit different. You know, there's some promises that cover everyone, every beast on the earth. So the sun, when the sun comes up, it doesn't just come up on those who follow God's word. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets to see the sun. Um, the, when the rain falls, everyone gets the rain. But there's some things where God, we have to make a decision and we have to choose which way we should go. Um, and some of those are obvious and some of them aren't as obvious, but 
Thankfully, God gives us lots of guidance on that. And that's what we'll be covering today is what that guidance looks like and what it says. Mm -hmm. So we will start with the salvation covenant. And if we can get someone to read uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, and someone else to read 2 Peter chapter 1, 10 through 11. I can do that. I can do 1 John. Okay. <laughs> okay, so first John 513 is the first one. Okay. Um first John 513. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. All right, and then Second Peter 1, 10 and 11. Uh, uh, wherefore, the rather, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what do these verses tell us about how we receive salvation and how do we make sure our calling and election is sure? By believing in the name of the son of God from 1 John 5, 13. That's what I got from that one is with our belief in him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, just like Paul said, you know, faith without works is dead um so if you're if you can claim any kind of thing that you want but if your life isn't showing an example of it uh by following the word of god uh listening to his commandments uh trying to have trying to turn away from the things of the world then you're not uh actually changed and you're not actually you know repentant or showing that you want to be part of the kingdom of the lord yeah and i like that that you um pointed out that it's in our the our every day is part of that so when we are making that call in election sure when we are we're, you know we believe but what does that belief look like Right. Because, you know, a lot of times we can, we can say we believe, we can display that belief on the Sabbath mm-hmm. from 11 to 1230, but in our everyday, um, mm-hmm. this irritation and frustration thing is sticking with me. So when <laughs> things come up in our lives and, you know, everyone around us is responding in one way, what does that look like when we respond? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what does it look like when no one is watching? Um, Mm-hmm. At my kids' school, they have a tenant, and it's one of the tenants is character. And as I ask my son all the time, "What is character? What is character?" And he's like, "It's what you do when no one else is watching you." Yeah. Um. You know, we can make a great show when everyone is around us, but yeah. that belief goes beyond just you know, the the thing, the obvious things that we do. Mm-hmm. And when I was studying the lesson like this week, and I read that, um, I thought of it as making your choice to choose God and do not waver from it um, as like adding to making that choice and still choosing God when no one's watching um, and also not wavering from it, making it sure in all areas of life. Yeah. Go ahead. And I was looking at to the, um, these things that it's you know referring to where it says if you do these things um this text follows um where it talks about you know add into, into godliness and brotherly kindness and mm-hmm. um, those that is that day-to-day um uh your interactions you know and and those things are not uh to be looked at add to you know faith virtue you know those type of things that's really what we should be demonstrating as we're walking you know on a day-to-day basis it's um, a daily decision um, and, and like you were saying, like frustration and irritation, people overlook those type of, you know, but I don't recall Jesus ever being um, frustrated or irritated. And so if we're 
um, mirroring or, you know, we are aligning ourselves to look like his character as the Holy Spirit is shaping that in us, then we should see more of how he would respond in the situation, how he would interact with people in a situation, as opposed to um, my character shining so bright till you can't see his. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. And one of the things you just said, the verses said, you know, onto faith, you add virtue. That's another thing is that building block. You know, we're never mm -hmm. where we need to be. We may achieve a certain thing and so, go, yes, I conquered that, but there's always a next thing. There's mm -hmm. always another piece of that puzzle and we can't go to the next piece until we finish the first piece. So some people get stuck in that grind of that one piece and that have to learn that one lesson over and over again. Mm -hmm. But if you learn that lesson, you can move to the next level. It's almost like video games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can level up and, and continue to build on that so that his character does throw show beyond ours. Yes. Yeah. So salvation is unmerited. You know, salvation, when Jesus died, he died for everyone. Yet there is some request in there. There is something that has to happen. Why doesn't everyone automatically just receive this gift, even though he died for everyone? Well, you know, he 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 died for everyone. And he also, he also created everyone and he created everyone with free will. Um, and it's it's a choice about whether or not you want to accept this gift or not. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they might, you know, they might want to live forever, or they might want to just not go to hell. But you know, do you do you also want to follow the parameters of the of the the stat the statutes that are necessary to to be alive forever? You know, to to put away the sin so that you can have that eternal life because mm -hmm. the, the sinful life will result in death, you know? Um, which which one do you love more, the, the ways of the Lord and his love for you or, you know, the, the things of earth that are, you know, temporary and fleeting? So it's 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 all, it's everyone everyone's offered the same gift, mm -hmm. um, but whether or not you want to accept that gift is is up to you. And um, what comes to mind too is uh, Amos 3 and 3, where it says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Mm -hmm. And in a covenant, there has to be an agreement. And so you can't, um, a covenant is not just entered into um, by everyone, a blanket kind of statement. There has, you have to respond to the offer. And so um, in that you know, covenant, it has to be something that you agree to. It, no one can claim that for you except for you. I think in that covenant too, it shows that relationship because it's normally in the covenant, it's a one-to-one -one thing. And if one party is not in it at all, they're doing their own thing and not having that conversation, a covenant can't, or an agreement can't be made. Mm -hmm. So while one person can want for the entire world, I want you to, I want to give you a million dollars. If you don't have that conversation with them and they understand that they have the million dollars for you, it can never happen, no matter how much they want to give it to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we will um, jump over to Deuteronomy. So we'll talk a little bit about Deuteronomy first, though. So Deuteronomy um, was Moses's farewell to the second generation of the Israelites, and they actually call it the Book of Remembrance. So it brings up a lot of the things, the lessons that were learned throughout that long, long time um, mm -hmm. that the children of Israel tarried and made these decisions oh when we had lessons on that it's just it's just like why chose with israel why <laughs> you had it all right there um but we have this wonderful book that moses left um as he wrote this letter to the to those to the children of um israel before his death so let's jump into deuteronomy we'll go to chapter 28 and we have uh, verses one through 14 on this. And we're actually going to read the entire thing because I feel like the entire thing is relevant. Okay. I can do that if you want. That would be awesome. Thank you. Robert. No problem. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, one through 14. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. 
Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be, uh, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, uh, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy baskets and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause his, thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in all, thou, in all that thou set, settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep his, the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shalt thou, uh, and of all the people of the earth, uh, ah, and all people of the earth shall see and that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous uh, in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy, thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. All right, so there's a lot in there. Yeah. What, no, what and that, that's the question. What blessings are promised? Which one stood out to you at least? Mm, good question. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite one is uh, how you will, uh, well, uh, I, I think it's a tie, um, how you will, uh, which one was it? Thou you shall lend to many and not borrow, borrow. and you yep. will always be uh, above the head and not the tail. Um, you know, it, it, it shows that, uh, you know, the Lord, if you, if you trust in the Lord, you will you will be abundantly blessed. Mm -hmm. um, you will have more than than you need, and you will be able to be a blessing to others, so that they can also trust in the Lord. Uh, if you continue to trust in Him, and uh, and that that uh, that blessing of of abundance that He gives you will will put you in such a, a right place that you won't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. even though others may be worrying about things. Mm -hmm. I the would one say, that, oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, the, um... <laughs> um, the one I would say would be verse eight, which is kind of similar to what Marlon was saying. Um, blessing on you in your storehouses and all which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord is God is giving you. That kind of makes me think of um, we're, we're not, all farmers right now and we all don't have storehouses in that kind of way but um, we are mostly getting money and we're also like working and getting money in that sense so I kind of think about of a time I had last year where I didn't have a job and I didn't know where money was going to be coming from and where I was going and it was a very hard time but um, this makes me think of it and how I'm here now with a job and having money to be able to save and just how God just blessed without me even knowing where it was going to come from. So that kind of made me think of that verse. Um, for me, it was uh, verse nine, where it says, um, the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Um, for me, the promise of where um, he says he's going to, he is going to establish thee and holy people unto himself. Mm. 
And um, I know that holiness without which no man shall see God is a true statement and I want to see the Lord. And so um, to know that as I'm walking and keeping his commandments that he's doing the establishing um, and, you know, for his own namesake. And so it um, gives me hope and um, certainty that as I cooperate and do my part, and it's like, it's right there, you know, you do this, I'll do that. I'll do this when you do that kind of, you know, um, that bilateral uh, covenant right there is just to me a beautiful promise. And I like the one at the beginning where it says, um, I like all the ones you all said, by the way, I just don't want to repeat them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All those blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord, your God. So it's like, it's so many blessings. We can't even consume them all because we just <laughs> don't know how to, um, and all he asks is for us to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And that is repeated through and through from one through 14. He's asking, I'll give you this if you obey me. I'll do this if you follow my commandments. I'll do this if you don't take other gods. All I'm asking is your obedience. And I'm and everything is different in how you look. So if you're a farmer, it talks about blessing in the city, blessing in the field. So if you're mm -hmm. a farmer, it's your fields are over over abundance. If you're selling your goods in the city, he's blessing you there. When you're leaving, when you're coming out and going in, he's blessing mm -hmm. you there. If if you're staying in front of your enemies, he's taking care of that too. Like any situation we could think of, mm -hmm. whether it's your finances, whether it's um, your spirituality, it's all taken care of in these verses. And I think that is amazing in itself. And it's only like one thing. It's not like if you, you know, if you jump through the hoop and turn around three times and stand on your head, then I'll give you a quarter mm -hmm. of the blessing. And then after that, you do this. It's like, no, it's very clean, cut, clear cut. And because it's Deuteronomy and Moses recounting everything, they know what those, those commandments are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's just, yeah. just that remind that reminder of that. So not only does this, this chapter talk about blessings, if you go into 15, it starts to talk about warnings of disobedience. And we won't jump into that part, um, mm -hmm. but knowing that that is there. So it wasn't all, all butterflies and, and hearts. Um, he also gave a warning to say, yes, do this. And this is what happened. But if you do this, this is also what would happen. So why is it important for us to hearken diligently? And what does that even mean to hearken diligently? Oh, um, when I was doing the lesson, I thought of be intentional. Mm -hmm. I thought of making it intentional to obey God. And I think of how we could obey God in the easy places and the places where we know how to. And as we were saying earlier, when no one's watching it can be harder versus when people are watching it's easier quote unquote um so i think of heart and diligently and i think of be intentional yeah that's that's great yeah and hearken um the definition itself is to listen and so when you're hearkening you know diligently you're conscientious you're thoughtful you know to the way that you're listening um mm -hmm. you're not uh careless in what you're hearing but you're um, taking that time and sometimes hearkening means to to listen again to go back you know and um, and that's why I, I love how you said that you know Deuteronomy is called the book of remembrance you can't hear what God said and just you know fly through your day not thinking about it we should be meditating on those things as we are going throughout our day and, and spending time you know yeah. in our life as as Christians in our separate you know, parts of life that, you know, work or school or family. And, you know, that, that, that was, that was kind of an uh, e example than like a, the account of the nation of Israel, that they weren't very diligent in their hearkening, which is why they fell so many times, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the curses were able to come upon them because they weren't diligent in their hearkening. Every, every time they got, you know, so much blessing from listening, they kind of started to waver mm -hmm. and, um, turn aside and you know think that they were think that they were the ones doing the with the strength and they could just do whatever they want at this point and then forget God and because of that you know 
as as you know they turned away from god and turned towards the rest of the world the rest of the word came upon them and were able to to bring these curses upon them as mm. as they uh as they as they stop so to, to be diligent you know there's there's an example of what not to do in, in israel mm-hmm. as, as there as there often is israel is a, mm-hmm. is a great example of to do and what not to do and that's a great example of a lack of diligence in their marketing right there and i don't do what those people did yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when i hear diligent i also think of consistency mm. and hard work um you know sometimes it takes trial after trial after trial and standing up and following. Let's take Marlon's daughter, for example. I'm sure she stood up mm-hmm. and fell how many times before she started to walk? Uh, or she could just be amazing and got up and start walking. We don't know. <laughs> he said once. <laughs> but it, it takes that diligence because we were all there as, as babies where we wanted to do this thing. We're like, those people are doing this thing. I think I can do this thing. Mm-hmm. And we kept trying and we failed. And we kept trying and we failed. Now we had the safety of our parents and we had the safety of a diaper on our behind to Mm -hmm. pat the fall, but we still kept trying. And then once we learn how to walk, we learn how to run. Mm -hmm. Now we probably, I not speaking for anybody else, but I have fallen a lot running because I am extremely clumsy and I was more clumsy (laughs) as a child, Mm -hmm. Um, but I still ran. And so in everything that we do is that, that trial and, but we get up and keep going. And so even if we fail at, at following all the commandments and we fail at the expectations that we've set on ourselves to meet Jesus at where he, where he wants us to be. I feel like that diligent part of the hearken diligently means don't give up, don't stop. Um, you know, just because you did it once and it didn't work out. It's like, okay, but I know that's, I know that's the truth. And I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I got to figure out how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to yeah. change my paradigm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great, that's great. So in this, so we, we have the blessings, we have that we, there's this covenant. So we know that there has to be some type of back and forth with a covenant. And we see that God has given us all these promises. Let's take a bit deeper into these promises and go to one of my favorite books in Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom and foolishness. <laughs> um, I liked that comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Let's read Proverbs chapter chapter three, verses one through 10. I'll read that. All righty. Proverbs three, one through 10. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find safe favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Mm. More promises. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, so let's break them down a little bit. So we'll start with the first one. And the, the, this one, it, it's more of action promise. Mm-hmm. So while the other one had the promises and then all, weave through it was like, and obey me and follow my commandments. Um, weave through it and not necessarily in a order. It was all like, you get all of this when you do this one thing. Mm-hmm. This was more of action promise, action promise. So we're mm-hmm. going to go through action promise on that. So the first one, what's the action? What's the promise? That's verses one and two. Uh, I keep my it. commandments. Forget not the law. Yeah. And what will happen? For length long of days life. and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Man, I'm okay with just the peace part. I, yeah. I want to live long, but in this world, <laughs> if you can walk through, if you can scroll through Facebook for longer than 45 seconds and still have peace. <laughs> yes. That in itself is a blessing. <laughs> yes. Um, 
So keep, don't forget the teaching. Keep, keep your, keep his commandments in your heart and you will become old, which is a blessing in itself. I am realizing that day by day. I want to be old one day (laughs) because a lot of people don't get to be old. Um, and that peace you'll have. Okay. So then verse three and four, what's the action? And then what's the promise? find mercy and truth um around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart what does that mean Mm. make them a part of you make them a choice that you make (laughs) so i think of that how um jesus said that um he would right he the the law goes further than just being an external action or a thought but we actually accept him into our hearts which um the bible says you know out of the um it's from the issue of heart of our heart you know it 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 shows the abundance of what's on the inside so by putting the um and in this instance the heart will be like your mind um you're taking those things and you're actually making them a part of you as opposed to just being an external action that you do mm-hmm. and i think of something bound, bound like says bind them around your neck i think of an ox and how mm-hmm. like it's it has this thing on it and it's like what controls it mm-hmm. so it's almost like loyalty and faithfulness and his love controls mm-hmm. us yes. and guides us because that yoke that the farmer's using guides the oxen in a certain direction, like let his love guide us to where we're going. Yes. So that's the action. What's the promise? To find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Mm -hmm. And have you ever had like, you walk into somewhere, people are just like, I don't know why I like you, but I like you. They don't know you're a Christian. (laughs) It's like, there's something about you. I just, I don't know what it is. Yeah. My mom will tell you I can make friends anywhere and I don't understand it, but she will tell me that. And I'm like, okay, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Humility. We love it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And so verses five and six action promise. Mm, The one that we are told so many times. (laughs) Trusting in the Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Naomi. No, we all said it at the same time. Trusting in the Lord. It's that important. And so it's not even just trusting in the Lord because we trust all the time. There's a specific part to this at the end. Lean Lean not to your your own own understanding. understanding. Yes. Trusting Him with everything you have because we will make up a story. Yes. We We will will make up a reason. We will make up uh, 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 anything to say, this is why I'm doing this, an explanation on it. Mm-hmm. Why I should buy this. Why you should buy, why I should go. Mm-hmm. Why I should go do this. Mm-hmm. Why I shouldn't, why I should say these things. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, and even, and even you know, uh, in, in addition to that, there's like the whole aspect of, you know, how many times you may have been uh led astray before Mm. so as far as you understand thing x you're doing thing x correctly but the bible says otherwise Mm. um so uh you need to trust what the lord says about how to deal with thing x um and not and not just go based on your past experiences even even though your past experience with the way you resolve thing x may have been successful Mm -hmm. it possibly still wasn't the right thing to do Mm -hmm. And as we read in Deuteronomy, God wants to bless us so much that we can't under, we can't hold it, accept it. Right. So, you know, it might, you might get a, a great thing, but I want the overflow. Yeah. You know, like, 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 uh, it's not example time. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, we can do examples. I've been exampling all night, Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just, I was just thinking about like, for example, Tide, you know, you, you might be the kind of person that, you know, thinks, uh, oh, you know, let me give some money to charity every now and then give some money to charity. 
And then you find out about a tithe and it's like, all right, I'll give my money instead of charity. I'll do it to tithe. And every now and then I don't give it to charity if I feel like it's going to be a hard month. So I'll do the same thing with tithe. Mm-hmm. And then when I, when I get some more later, you know, I'll, 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 you know, I'll start paying again. But if you if you if you're trusting in the Lord, you know you're not you, you're not supposed to give up that tithe. You're supposed to pay that tithe first, first, and then and then do with the rest. Yeah. Um, so you know, so as an example, you know you 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 you've been doing thing the thing this way for so long, and it's worked. You know, you you get out of that little hard spot of of no money, and then you get back to it. But if you trust in the Lord, you know He'll get you out of that hard spot, even though you paid the tithe. You know, yeah. and he'll and he'll and he'll continue to bless you with what you have, and yeah. show you that you 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 have you have more than you even realize you had. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good segue when you look at verse. Oh, which one is it? Nine. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's an action and there's a promise that goes right along with what you just said. Yes. yes. Yeah. Action there. Honor honor yeah. the Lord with thy substance and the first fruits of thine increase. You know, so mm-hmm. thy barns shall be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine. Burst. Yes. Uh, you need to get new presses. Because <laughs> yes. they bursted. They bursted yes. with, with so much. But I think that's beautiful too, because um where it says the first fruit. So it's not what you and it even that deals with your attitude and your mindset and how you're giving God what you're giving him. You know, am I after I've I've spent and it, even if it is the 10%, but after I spent it and have enjoyed my increase, then do I scrape together the pieces and the remnants and give what's left to God? You know, and oh thank goodness I got just enough left to pay tithe, you know. It, it deals with your mindset of um how you present what you present to God in in honoring him. And, um, and that bursting doesn't just happen because, you know, voila, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. there, it's a miracle. My, you know, barns are overflowing, but in that, when you allow the Holy Spirit to deal with your mindset, then it'll also tell you how to be responsible and how to be, you know, a good steward and no, you don't need another pair of shoes or you don't need, you know, you'll see where, um, he, and, and acknowledge him in all your ways that he's directing your paths. Those are the things that he'll say, no, you know, no, this isn't the time to take a vacation. No, this isn't the time to, mm-hmm. you know, make that investment. And so um, all those promises come in as we have that, you know, correct mindset and, and honoring and not just God has always cared about, even in the um, sacrificial system and sanctuary, what type of offering we give, you know, and that is, you know, without spot or blemish or, you know, not given begrudgingly, things like that. So, 100%. And I think it, you make a good point with like, is there always be, will be enough at the end. And, and, but when you scrape it together, you didn't trust. Yeah. You didn't trust that you would have enough by yeah. saying, I don't know what else is left in here, but this goes first. And then yeah. whatever is left is what Mr. Mortgage and Mr. Lights and, and Mr. Yeah. Um, payment budget or whatever yeah you know? the rest of the budget yeah you know all of that I, I because I trust God to give him what he has asked for first right. and he'll make the rest work out right. Um, right and we have we work with people on their finances a lot and we have seen where when people switch their mindset mm-hmm. on that they start getting raises um promotions mm-hmm. money coming out of nowhere and it's not the last minute money. It's not the, oh, I got the check to pay this bill money. Mm-hmm. It's like we paid all the bills and there was just extra money left over. And we don't know how we haven't made any more money, mm-hmm. you know, cause we all hear the, the blessings of, oh, I had a, a whole thing and I, I, I just didn't have enough. And it came in like, yeah. I love the Ram in the Thicket stories. They are beautiful. But what is even better is when you you sit down in the beginning and you know there's not supposed to be enough and there mm-hmm. is yeah and that's what this promise is is that there's like this overflow and this bursting and you're just like that has to be god because the num two and two never equal 12 <laughs> ever but somehow yeah. it did <laughs> yeah and so we um let, we're going to talk a bit more about the, the tithing there because I think there, and this talks about the tithe contract. So 
as we trust God with the first fruits, we have this bursting. And I, this is also going to stick in my head. This is going to be a very sticky week for me. <laughs> um, so let's read Malachi chapter three, verses seven through 11. You might be able to say it by memory, but we can read it. All right, I'll read that. Okay. It says, even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your wine cast her fruit, I'm sorry, your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, so another promise, another action and promise, but he actually called them out first. And he was like, hey, guys, so all of your, your, your ancestors, all those people back there that you've been studying and reading about, yeah, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't keep that. And you're like, what, what are you talking about? And it's like, well, I need you to return to me because this is what I said to do back then. They didn't do it. They taught you wrong all these years. I'm here mm -hmm. to tell you, you were wrong. Here's what we're going to do. Return to me. He's like, wait, what? How are we going to give something to you? You're God. Like, I, there's nothing I can give you that you don't already have. And they're like, ha ha, but there is. Um, you ever heard of a man robbing God? Like you, you're robbing me. And he's like, they're like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. You own everything. How can we rob you? Like, mm -hmm. I can't go into heaven and take your golden throne and walk out and take it to my house. Like that, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, how, well, how are we robbing you? What are we doing? He's like the tithe and the offering. Because I said way back then, told Cain and Abel, this is what we're going to do. I told the children of Israel, this is what we're going to do. I've been saying that all through this time, but you're not giving this back to me. So here's what's going to happen. You keep doing this, you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. That's the action. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the yeah. result, but we can turn that around. You can be blessed. So super easy to do. And they're like, wait, how do we do this? And it's like, bring all the tithe. So don't give me part of it. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, don't tithe ish with mm -hmm. me. Um, you know how we do half halfway. And we're like, Oh, I'm going to get there. The Lord's working on me, bring all of it to me. And if you trust me with this, there'll be food. So you don't have to worry about the fact that you're giving me something because, and you're saying my family's not going to eat. I will make sure that happens. Um, and if you don't believe me, test me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Try it. See what happens. And we tell people that all the time when we're doing their finances. We're like, try it for try it for a month and see what happens. We'll meet again and we'll talk about it. And yeah. when they meet with us again, it's always a good story. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's a little stressful, it's a good story. <laughs> um, and if you try me and you bring the full thing, so it's like we trust with all our hearts. We give all to God. We have we're the, we're like the ox with we're following love. I will not only make sure you have enough to eat that, you know, you're, you're full. It's going to, your bats are going to be bursting. You're it's gonna burst. so much that it, it's overflowing. <sighs> not only that, your fields won't have any problems. So while your neighbors who are doing what they want to do have a bad year, you're going to be overflowing and your fields will continue producing. So I'm protecting you on top of this. Um, and you'll never have a barren feel. So why not try it? Sounds, I just sound like a really good car salesman right there. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is what God just said in these verses. So my question to you is why tithe? Because God 
simply because the Lord will bless you more than you have an understanding that he can. Mm -hmm. Off of that 10% of, of, of exampled faith, um, mm -hmm. you'll see that, that, uh, that you, that the Lord has everything that you need mm -hmm. and more. Burst in bats. Burst in bats. Yes. So yeah, how, and it's, go ahead, Lavana. And it really, it speaks of your relationship. It's one of those things that, um, because it is such a trusting, you know, when you're, you're referring to um, supplying for your family and, and, you know, and then we can get dramatic and, you know, food or we're going to be homeless. And, you know, you look at um, those type of things, but it's truly a trusting, um, a, a, it's a, it's a outward manifestation of trust. You know, you can say I trust God and I depend on God and I believe God, but when I take my substance and I give it to the cause of God, and I'm not just talking about, because um, when it talks about um, there won't be room enough to receive, now there, there's so, surplus, there's more than what I need. Now then, am I, is I'm, am I just, you know, storing that up? You know, like the man who built new barns and then he was, you know, he passed the next night. Or am I going to use this surplus now to to sow into the cause of God? So mm -hmm. all of that really just speaks to your relationship of trust when it comes to God. I'm glad you answered them that way, because my next question was, does tithing have to do with relationship with God? So you just answered that <laughs> beautifully. <laughs> um, and it's like compound interest. You know, God does give us more so that we can be a blessing. He said in Deuteronomy, we will be um, the lender and not the borrower. And so that that surplus does provide us the means. Because a lot of times when we are on the other side, before we get it right, we're always saying, I wish I could help this person. I wish mm -hmm. I could, you know, send, send the message, help the message move further financially. I wish I could do x and with that overflow with that surplus we're able to do those things um so we follow the whole dave ramsey principle that's one of the things we do and the last baby step is to give like no one else the entire reason we do it is to give it all away it's not to become wealthy it's not yeah. to build a bigger house and you know be bezos neighbor um is to to give to those that we have in our hearts wanting to give to anyway. And God sees that when yeah. you're genuine and pure in that, and you're like, I'm doing this so that I can, I can do what you have called me to do um, when you call me to do it and have the means. Because how many times have we heard the anchor of the Holy Spirit? And we're like, I, I really, there's no way I could, even if I wanted to. Um, so I think that's amazing in itself to that, that bursting is not for us to mm -hmm. enjoy is for us well, we enjoy it because when we do as Jesus did in the giving is we get that joy, but not to enjoy as in I'm going to South Beach every weekend and buying new shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in order to do this, there's more promises, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's read. The first one we're going to read is Matthew 6, 25 through 33. I can read that one. Okay. So Matthew 6, 25 through 33. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in his, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, 
will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All right, so a little transparency, verse 25 at the, the bottom, and it says, is life more than, is not life more than food? I, I got a little offended because it like, is it? <laughs> like wait a minute we needed to live right i, I like food no <laughs> <just joking. laughs> um, but why should we not worry about our day-to-day and what should we be focused on instead of our our day-to-day living hmm. because he promised to take care of us he promised that he will take care of us and we can trust that. Yeah. I mean, and, and when you look at the verses, I mean, it talks about not worry about what we eat, what we drink, what we wear. Um, and it's funny because we do, like all of us, we live in a city, but it's not like a huge city, but we live in the city-ish. Um, and when we get out to the country finally and we can see the stars and we can see the flowers and we can beautiful. see the trees and we're like, this is so beautiful. Like look at God's creation and we revel in it and we soak it up and we love it. And then we come back and we go, man, looking at our kids, those pants are too short for you. Can I get you some new pants? And it's like, we just looked at how God has, yeah. has clothed the entire world with his his breath like he just said it he spoke into yeah. existence and the clouds are pink and purple and orange and and yellow <laughs> just because the sun's setting um you know and we cannot explain that glory yet we still worry about all the little things and go i need a new dress for sabbath because mm. i wore i i can't wear the same dress once in the, you know twice in a month um mm. we worry about the smallest things mm-hmm. And it says that worrying cannot add any time to our life. It actually takes it away because stress and how our yeah. body comes. So, and it talks about Solomon too and how he was well-dressed because, you know, he had a lot of money mm-hmm. and he had all the stuff and he couldn't compare to what God could do. So mm-hmm. instead of worrying about that, the last verse tells us what we should be focused on. The um, kingdom of God. Look at those things. What is that, Marlon? The kingdom of God and His righteousness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if we if we if we point our mind at the Lord first and and consider how you know we can best serve Him and uh, live our lives uh, as as His children, then He promises that He will uh, definitely give us what we need and um, and we will be blessed by. Uh, by uh, by our choice to live to live that life and um that blesses me when we talk about um the the quote um and it um actually when we talk about tithing it says he who gave his only begotten son to die for you has made a covenant with you like we're not when we think about how amazing he's already shown he's given us more than we could ever by rights deserve and so just in giving jesus for us how can i not know that he's not going to give me everything else i need to you know when you look at the love of god in that one um that started and and gave us entrance to have a covenant with god then it seems so silly you know when we're looking at but we do we get so caught up in those you know temporal things um till we surpass the reality of we're in a relationship we're in a covenant with this kind of god you know and so let's look at another action promise here um isaiah 26 verse 3 i'll take that 
I think this just builds on what we've already been talking about here. Thou wilt mm -hmm. keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Amen. So what do we have to do and what do we get? Keep our minds on God and we will get peace. Yeah. And not only our mind on God is the trust. trust. Yeah, trust. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Brings back that trust. Yeah. Because if you think about the last verse where it says, if we focus on the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto you. And all those things were food, clothing, you know, all the day-to-day -day things. The reason we don't have peace and we worry is because we're worried about the things we don't have. So if we trust him to provide those things and you have the peace because you're not worried about where the next anything is going to come mm -hmm. from. And that, and that trust is, um, I think where we fall is because we don't see it today, but we have what we need today. Mm -hmm. We're, we're concerned about tomorrow and, and next week and, and, and next month's mortgage. But if you look around, you're in your home and you have food and, you know, it's, um, and that trust in, uh, not knowing where it's coming from, you know, and um, so, yeah, that trust is um, something that we have to, and we don't have control over it, I think is where a lot of it, um, I remember saying I wanted, um, one thing I was, you know, going through financially, I was, I just want to take care of myself, you know, and I thought it made perfect sense to me, you know, is it too much to ask, just take care of myself, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, but that rebellious and, um, you know, self-righteous mindset is where people want to live as opposed to trusting God, you know, and, and that he does care for us and will take care of us. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say that um, I actually wrote this verse on a sticky note and put it on my desk at work because I was going through such a stressful time at one point. And that was like probably the verse of the day, um, like through the Bible app, I get that notification for the verses of the day. And I saw that verse that day and it just spoke to me. So reading it now, I was like, wow, <laughs> it's just brought that back to me. So. I love the, the, the whole essence of this keeping our minds staying in that that peace all the time that he's going to take care of us um and you were talking about where is that going to come from we think about tomorrow i know what it is now that i was going to say so i saw um at the end of the last year you know how everyone does all their their wrap up and they're getting ready for next year this was like in november ish mm -hmm. someone posted that they they treat everything they do as if it's the best thing they've ever done and because of that, they constantly stay in joy. Mm. So if I'm having a cup of tea, it's the best cup of tea I've ever had. If I'm having a sandwich, it's the best sandwich I've ever had. If I'm having a cup of water, it's the most refreshing water I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And by that, they enjoy the moment. So they're not thinking about the next cup of water or the next cup mm. of tea or refilling it. It's what I have right now is lovely. It's I, I, It tastes good. It's sweet. It's warm. I was cold and it's warm. Um, and with that, they start to appreciate things a little differently. Mm -hmm. So this is the yeah. best Sabbath school lesson you all have ever been a part of. Yes. <laughs> You're here right now. <laughs> yes, Don't worry about what happened last week or what's happening next week. Enjoy this one. Uh, but yeah. I think that, and just having that kind of in the back of my head also helps me to, to stay in that, that mind of peace, because it's like, I'm not worried about where the next cup of tea is going to come from. I'm not worried about where the next sandwich is going to come from. I'm enjoying that. I, this is delicious because I told you all food is important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, and after I eat this, I won't be hungry. Yeah. And it's not up to me to determine when I do get hungry, what that next piece of food will be. Yeah. Although I might be the one preparing it because I'm the mom in the house, but God <laughs> is providing the food for me to prepare and it's not up to me to say yes we have you know where it's coming from 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's look at first John chapter one, verse nine. I have it. Okay. First John chapter one verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what's our action? Confess. Mm -hmm. And what's the promise? Cleanse. Cleanse. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. The faithfulness of the Lord. Yes. And that in itself is immense. That's that's beyond bursting bats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so we'll and we'll look at the last one, which is Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Oh yeah. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven." and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Yes. I think this one was left for last for a reason. So yes. what's the action? <laughs> uh, call, uh, humble yourself. Mm -hmm. pray. And pray and seek. And what's the Turn. promise? He will. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, there was more action. Go for it. I was going to say, yeah, the last one, turn from your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. And what's the promise? You will get the ear of the Lord and you will have forgiveness and your land will be healed. Yes. So why was this, why did I say that this was left for last? Why do you think? Summary? Kind of a encompassing a lot of the um, actions we have been called to do and an overall blessing that kind of is most important in the sense. Oh, and, and, a lot, and a lot of our, a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the actions that end up not being done, I feel like because of a lack of humbling, mm -hmm. um, we, 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 we always want to do things our way or whatever way we feel is best. And we need to humble ourselves and trust in the Lord that we, that he will do what's, what's right for us. And I think this is one of the hardest ones to do. You know, we, we can put ourselves aside and trust. We can, you know, indulge ourselves in the moment and, and we can even confess when we pray, but to humble ourselves, to have humility mm -hmm. and to not, to put self completely aside because in none, and none of this did it say partial. It was always all, all, all. So to put ourselves completely aside, and as Lavana said earlier, that self-righteousness goes completely away. In our human nature, that is like the ultimate. Um, it's, it's the hardest thing to do. So we humble ourselves and then turn from your wicked ways. So then you have to change those things that we keep falling into time after time after time. So there is that diligent, that diligence that we have to go through to do it over and over and be consistent in it to level up consistently yeah. um but there's a promise that if we do this is what will happen yeah. and so i think you know the other ones we work on and we it's a little bit easier to stomach yeah. but when you go i have to give up all i who i am um mm -hmm. that's a, a hard one yeah. for people um my husband and i we talk about a lot of current events and one we talk about as 2022 was wrapping up was the death of the queen and why that meant so much in our household outside of the fact that he grew up in a place where like the they were the it's crown so reigned. Yeah. yeah um but we talked about the queen as a person and how when she stepped up to be the queen she essentially gave up her entire life mm 
-hmm. and said, I will not be who I thought I could be, or even what I will want to do for the rest of my life so that I can serve the people. Mm -hmm. And that's what she did consistently. Imagine a human doing that for humans and where Mm -hmm. God is just asking us, humble yourself to your creator, to the one Mm -hmm. who made you who you are. And I sent my son to die for you and I'm willing to give you everything. And all I'm asking is you not to be you, but to let me shine through you. Yeah. And, and it's not even just, you know, it's not even just shining through me, shining through you for my benefit. It's also for your own, you know? So I'm, I'm getting, it's, there's so much in it for you to, 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 to listen and do this. Um, there's so many, look at, look at the promises that, come from from the trust uh from the faith in me uh that are fulfilled just just even some of them just based on the default of listening Mm -hmm. not even things i have to do just just by listening to these things you get so many blessings and then on top of that i will bless you even more so you know there's there's so much the lord has in store for us that that even that just by by listening to him by trusting him that he can give us that and that's that's powerful that is so powerful it's like i don't want you to hurt so just do these things and you don't have to hurt but we then we go no i think i want to hurt yeah mm. i like yeah <laughs> sucker i know me. and it um but really too i think where we stumble in that um our part of it was when it says turn from your wicked ways the, the turning part like okay you know, I should repent. But then when he identifies those ways as wicked, mm-hmm. you know, is it really wicked? Cause I, you know, cut somebody off and, you know, maybe screamed at them, blew my horn. Cause I remember, you know, even your horn can, it has, it, the conviction in my heart was that it has its own conversation. So <laughs> what you, if we translated that horn to English, what did it just say, mm-hmm. you know? And so um, when you, you think about the wicked ways is that really wicked you know um it, when we don't often want to identify the things that we do we want to make them just a little mistake or a little you know that probably just was a bad choice mm, but just you know the wicked. bible calls it wicked you know and, and so we don't it. often want to identify what we're doing as wicked yeah mm-hmm. i think that's one of the reasons he told us to wear the kindness around our neck and right on the tables of our hearts right yeah because you know you might not you might not like oh that's not so bad but it, when you mm-hmm. compare it to what actual kindness is 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 that is that something that is an example of kindness is this is this an example of what the lord wants me to be mm-hmm. if i it might not be that bad but is this is this what heaven is going to be like yeah mm-hmm. um this the place of peace and love and kindness you know the fruit of the spirit in everyone and are people going to be doing this in heaven so that's mm-hmm. the way i should be acting and i think of when we were growing up we're like teenagers in general um the thought could be like well they're doing it they're doing it and they seem fine or they're prospering but that's not where our focus should be. It should be on God and what he has said, not on other people around us in that sense. That's right. And we can only see as far as we can see. Mm -hmm. And so while it may seem like they're prospering and they're doing well and they came, they turned out well, we never know what truly is happening internally, what they're dealing with. Um, A lot of times we see, you know, this happened to this person and this person took their life or what have you, because we don't see what they're battling with on the inside, even though the outside looks like they're prosperous and they're doing well, yeah. um, which is why God tells us, and I, I like that that yoke of kindness around your neck, because uh, I always tell my children, they go, well, it wasn't that I didn't, it wasn't that bad that I said that, and I go, if that person would have said the exact same thing to you, what would have been your response? Mm-hmm. And is that the type of response you want to invoke in someone else? Mm-hmm. So when I honk my horn at somebody, it may seem innocent. Like they were in the way. If someone honked their horn at me, what, how would I feel in that same situation? Yeah. It's like, how dare they? And that's not what you want to, to bring up in people. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons I really like Japanese cars. Cause I feel like their horns have like levels of, it's not just, <laughs> ah, you know, you get to, ah, 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 ah. you can, you kind of coordinate it a little bit. 
When, when, I, when I got my first American car, there was only it's like ah, it's like oh, it's, I don't want to press this. It's so rude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like I just wanted to alert you. I didn't want to yeah, scream. Exactly. Yeah. I wasn't trying to yell at you. I'm just try, I'm trying to be a nice guy over here. <laughs> that's not the, that's not the voice I'm trying to project. Yeah. Yes, I even have to watch myself. Like if I'm sitting. And I got distracted by like sitting at a light and distracted. Someone will honk their heart behind me to tell me that the light's green. But I immediately like, why? Thank you. Thank you for letting me know <laughs> yeah. that the light is green. Oh, I made a mistake. Excuse me. It was yeah. the American horn that, that they, they didn't give you the Japanese horn. That yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All I need was a, a small tube too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we, and in this, I think we have, we can all agree that we all have choices. Mm -hmm. We have a choice to follow or to not to be humble or to not to trust or to not trust. So how does this understanding throughout this lesson? This is our wrap up question. How does this um, understanding in this lesson help us with our choices that we will have this week? Well, you know, I think I think what it'll what it'll do is is oh, I hope it will it will as it sits in our heart is in our in our mind it will it will uh, weigh on our hearts so that you know like like it like it said uh, is into uh, <laughs> to be to be written on the tables of our hearts and then that okay <laughs> that way uh, that way we will we will we will not only benefit our ourselves but those around us from it um we it, it helps us it helps us see that the the choices are there always to to choose the lord to trust to trust his words and to have our, put our faith in him and then and then we will be blessed from it and i think for me it's the um knowing that i'm in an active relationship with the lord and daily i'm making choices you know um and what I choose to, to do my part that there there's a record you know being kept of those daily choices mm-hmm. and I want them to be faithful you know I want at the end of it the Lord to say you know you kept your end of the deal you kept your end of the covenant and really if we be honest it's more like we allowed him to keep it through us you know we surrendered enough and and cooperated with the Holy Spirit enough till the Lord was able to do in us what we needed him to do. We just, you know, cooperated. It wasn't by our power or because we were so lovely in our own choices, but the Holy Spirit put it in us and we said yes. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, for me, the, the choice to, well, the, the yoke of kindness um, and every choice that they make using the measuring stick of if I was 100% kind and all of that and everything that I did, what would that look like versus what I did? And using that as a measuring stick um, against my responses, my reactions and how I make other people feel and how I communicate with them, what I do, my actions towards them and things like that. So I think that will help guide my decision-making in a better light this week. And with that, we will wrap up our lesson. Thank you all for such a, a lively lesson um, mm-hmm. and for being so engaged in the best Sabbath school lesson mm-hmm. that you've ever had today. Until next week, right? <laughs> We're not looking that far. Okay, yeah, not looking that far. We're in today. <laughs> We're in today. <laughs> um, so we will ask Sister Levana to close us out in prayer. Dear Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this time together to study your word. Thank you for your precious promises. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that you sent to give us power so that we could actually live this life that you lived here on earth and the Holy Spirit can live it through us. We want to keep our part of the covenant. You've already kept yours. And then you're even now making intercessions for us that we wouldn't be lost. And we're asking that you would just bring this lesson back to our hearts and our minds Let us meditate on it. Let us even go further to look into those areas where we might not be keeping our end of the covenant. We're asking that you would help us to surrender even now the more to you. 
Forgive us for the ways that we've failed you. We're asking that you would help us to turn from those wicked ways so that we can see you in peace and that our life will sing of you, of your love, of your character, of your goodness, of your greatness. We believe that you're able to do exceedingly above, abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that closing prayer. And thank you all for joining us for the Sabbath school lesson. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope that you have a wonderful Sabbath and come back next week as we continue studying um, our new quarter. Have a wonderful Sabbath and see you next week. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.